Full house. My two dads. Different strokes. Webster, Punky Brewster, Empty Nest, Blossom. Silver Spoons? Give me a break. Who's the boss? What are we talking about? All the 80 sitcoms where the mom is dead or missing. Wait, what? No, these utensils. I think these are real silver. Who owns this place now? The Queen of England? Considering that these were family-friendly shows, this is a freakish amount of mom corpses. Way too many to be a coincidence. Yeah, we're just trying to figure out why. Married to that ring, by the way? I have a silver guy. It's way up right now, you know. Well. You know, some of us are. It's not hard. This is the same age of television that brought us Small Wonder and ALF. Audiences were probably just sick of seeing the same nuclear sitcom, so then a bunch of hack writers came along and tried to disrupt that by just throwing whatever they could at them. I mean, cat-eating aliens and robot daughters. Basement Bayos. Basement? Really, I always just thought he lived downstairs and it was... understood. Anyways, why are you surprised that they're subtracting a family member? 13 times, though, and always the mom. That's 13 dead or missing moms in 80 sitcoms. That's not an experiment, that's a vendetta. Well, what was the first one? Differ er, in strokes, 1978 to 1986. I know it's not spelled or pronounced that way, but we're in public, and I don't think I'm allowed to say it the other way. Uh, it also has maybe the darkest backstory of any sitcom. Arnold and Willis have to go live with the boss of their mother once she dies, and it's this staunchy white guy who wants nothing to do with these orphans because he's still reeling trying to take care of his own daughter after the death of his wife. That's two dead moms. Count that one too. And that show was a big success, right? So there you go. I mean, the golden rule of television is copy the shit that works and then cover your tracks just enough so we don't get sued. That's why we have a billion procedurals with a brilliant yet tactless hero. Ooh, what does that say about us today? Maybe we should dive into that. You, you kidding me? We're hot on the trail of this mom murderer and you want to close the book so we can talk about bones? F*** you. Yeah. Clearly those shows haven't affected any of us. You were saying, Dan? Disappearing Moms was the go-to for over 10 years for these shows. And sure, sometimes studios were probably stealing the idea from each other, but I don't know. That doesn't explain the other side of the equation. What other side? Why did I want all those dead moms so bad? Or why did anyone? Why did audiences tune in week after week to laugh at grieving families and abandoned children? Maybe it has something to do with what women are supposed to bring to the table. Be really careful here. Figuratively. The role of the mother in 70s sitcoms was to be the moral center of the family. They were the voice of reason. They kept the family cohesive. They were the anchor, the, the glue. I mean, look at all in the family. The only thing between Archie Bunker and a clan rally was Edith. Happy days, Partridge family. Good times. Yeah, that checks out. So maybe 80 sitcoms just figured out that it's more fun to take the glue out, sit back and watch the family unravel. You kill off the Ned Stark archetype right away and what do you get? Dad's burning dinners. Classic. Or buying bras for their daughters. Bewildering sex talks and tampon shenanigans. Oh, oh, oh. Unaccompanied minors playing in a dump and one of them gets stuck in a fridge. <laughs> That's not funny. That was a very special episode and saved a lot of lives, Kate. Oh my god, you're right though. Where was Punky Brewster's foster father? Ah! Neglect! Think about it. Neglect is the best gift a sitcom family can get. With neglect, everything is possible. The thing Soren said about the mother being the traditional caretaker, but also, let us not forget the old adage. When God closes her casket, he doth open a window. That's not a thing. Suddenly, the kids are free to have these big, lawless adventures because dads are just bumbling idiots who are always looking the other way. Anyway, I want to call her, but I just don't know if it's ethical. What would you do, Dad? Be the blonde you were born to be. It's bigger than sitcoms. Not necessarily because the moms are gone, but every movie with kids in the 80s would not have been possible without parental neglect. The Goonies, E.T., Karate Kid, Monster Squad, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Wow, the 80s was really responding to abandonment. Yeah. I know. Why? <laughs> I solved it. If he says the answer is lupus, I'm gonna be so mad that we didn't go with my thing. It has to do with a cultural phenomenon that you, lucky few, probably haven't had to deal with, but what over 60% of Americans think about all the time. The big D. Be really careful here. Even if those missing moms gave 80 sitcoms the opportunity to be good, I think we can all agree that none of them actually were very entertaining. I mean, Full House was just a series of catchphrases. Oh, nuts. It's me, Michelle. Oh, mercy. Oh, rude. You got to. Surrounded by people trying to touch Uncle Jesse's hair, even though he did not want you to touch his hair. I like to mess it up! 
And they were still massively successful, even though they weren't good, because they were scratching a different itch altogether. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble paying attention. I keep expecting you to talk about your dick. I didn't expect you, lucky few, to understand. I'm talking about divorce. My parents are divorced. I'm divorced. In the 1980s, uh, a lot of states started enacting the no-fault divorce rule, and suddenly people would just start getting divorced just because they wanted to. By 1985, divorce rates had nearly doubled and started rising every year after Yeah, that. but these shows are about dead moms, not divorced ones. Oh my god, he's right. It doesn't even matter. Everyone in America was suddenly worrying, or at least aware, of what was gonna happen to all these broken families when the next generation grew up. They were worried because family is at the center of the American social structure. And that is at the center of the American dream. And the center of that center is the matron core of family values. The glue. The big D. Moms, oh god. So the sitcom acknowledges the problem, rips the heart out of the family, and then faces that cultural fear and says, it's okay, everything is gonna be fine. People don't watch My Two Dads and Who's the Boss because they're good. They watch them because they're comforting. Even if you didn't grow up with them, if you watch them now, they're still strangely comforting because that was the whole point. They killed off the mom to show you that American families could still make it. What do you think the worst case scenario was? I mean, what were people worried? All these kids are gonna grow up and become serial killers? Yeah, probably drug abuse. The 80s were big on very special episodes, too. But then a bunch of those child stars grew up to be drug addicts. It's like the whole thing was just an empty promise to divorcees. Ooh. Oh, that makes me uncomfortable. All children of divorce end up getting messed up. I mean, I turned out just great. What? No, yeah, you're fine. But I'm talking about. Ow! Yeah! There's the culprit. Hold on, is that mine? Be really careful here. You guys ready to order? Yeah, I'd like my candelabra back for starters. Two of those. We're fighting over a candelabra. Come back in three minutes. I'll take a chai. I'll get you that. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We had a lot of fun in today's episode, but. We talked about some very special episodes, and that's no joke. There are a lot of things that you need to think about when you are doing your own show that could be dangerous, even deadly. Mm -hmm. Cops, for instance. At any, oh, um, oh I'm sorry. I hadn't, I hadn't quite worked up to AIDS yet. I was ramping there by going through all the other dangers. But yeah, that's really the, that's the, the spectrum. <laughs>